Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a real quick bulletin uh, from the Angry Astronaut before I go running out the door to uh, head into London to get a refill, yet another refill on a prescription that I didn't think I was going to need, but I've been stuck here for so long, mostly because what's been happening in Cornwall. But today I've got nothing but good news coming out of Cornwall and when it comes right down to it, mostly good news coming from NASA as well. As many of you probably know, contact was lost with the Orion capsule for a brief amount of time and also there have been some issues with the navigation system, but for the most part, this capsule and really the entire SLS rocket has been acing this test. Um, but, I mean, what does this mean? As I mentioned in a previous video about the subject, doesn't this mean it's just going to perpetuate SLS to, you know, doom us to using this rocket for a lot longer? We're going to find out in just a moment. <laughs> Oh, and if I may give you a really quick piece of advice, if you travel overseas, make sure that you have arrangements made for your medication. I brought a two-month supply with me thinking that was going to be enough, and of course, it was not. Space being space, these things can take a lot more time, and as a result, I've had to go through the very complicated system here in the UK for people who aren't part of the NHS trying to get medication. A month or so ago, I shelled out quite a lot of money in order to get a prescription. At least it happened, though, for a while. I thought I wasn't even going to be able to get it. Received a lot of support at that time. Thank you so much and going through it yet again. So just to be clear, I'm not in a state of financial crisis or anything like that. It would be nice if I could raise a couple hundred dollars, but not entirely crucial. PayPal link is in the description, but please do not do anything unless it's very convenient for you to do so. And I'll let everybody know once I've raised enough money so people can stop. Thanks again. And here is the guilty party, Virgin Orbit, and especially the UK government and the CAA. These folks have been making my life extremely difficult as of late, well, everybody's lives, to be honest, by holding up a rocket launch that should have taken place a very long time ago. Well, weeks ago anyway. So, in spite of the frustration, however, we have some good news at this point. The CAA did grant their approval about a week and a half ago, and on top of that, the only thing really holding up this launch at this point is Thanksgiving and the various Virgin Orbit staff. Remember, Virgin Orbit is an American company going back to spend a little time with their families over the holidays. After that, the launch is scheduled to take place in the first part of December. And by the way, in case you're wondering how I know this, this is per at least two sources at the UK Space Agency and also per Anne Swift, who is the Sector Development Manager for Space at the Manufacturing Technology Center here in the UK. They are closely connected with all of the satellite companies who have their payloads on the Virgin Orbit rocket. My interview, by the way, with Anne Swift was extremely interesting. Don't you think so? Oh, you didn't watch it? Well, it's linked at the end of this video. And as I was hoping, the SLS system has been performing perfectly ever since it got away from that damn launch tower. I felt really for a considerable amount of time that the rocket itself was going to perform pretty well after it got away from that cobbled together piece of garbage, and it has indeed. An analysis of the launch indicated that it generated about exactly as much thrust as was anticipated, about 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, and although the this caused problems with the launch tower, as that is to say, some damage. Everything else has been going perfectly well. Okay, well, not exactly perfectly. At 12.09 a.m. Central Standard Time on November 23rd, for 47 minutes, NASA lost the communications link between Orion and the Deep Space Network. The reconfiguration had been conducted successfully several times before, but on that particular reconfiguration, they lost the signal for almost an hour. But the team is investigating what happened, but they did resolve the issue on the ground side, and engineers are examining data from the event to help determine what happened. 
Now, the European service module has been performing flawlessly, and that's a very good news because it handles the propulsion for Orion. As of November 22nd, it had already completed five outbound trajectory corrections, which is nothing unusual on this kind of flight, or any flight for that matter, and its engines have been performing perfectly. It has 33 engines, actually, including R4D11 engines, which are a variant of the flight-proven r R4Ds, which were originally developed for the Apollo program. Yes, they're utilizing 50-year-old technology, and this was employed on every mission to the moon. Well, if it works, don't fix it, I guess. And now that Orion has entered its distant retrograde orbit, it must carry out another burn on December 1st to break away from that trajectory, and yet another burn on December 5th in order to set up another close lunar flyby. That burn, which is also called the return powered flyby will slingshot Orion back towards the Earth for a high speed re entry and splash down in the Pacific west of San Diego on December 11th. And if everything goes well with that, SLS will have passed this entire test with flying colors. Now, is that bad news? Well, in some ways, yes. It almost guarantees that we're going to be using SLS for a considerable amount of time, at least as far as transporting astronauts from Earth to the moon. But here's something else that it guarantees, that Artemis is going to continue pushing forward, that Congress is at least going to believe that their money has been well spent and that they have results in exchange for their investment. Yes, it's too much investment. Yes, it's investment in the wrong kind of technology, but nevertheless, if Congress keeps investing the money, Artemis will continue, our return to the moon will continue, and our long-term objective of going to Mars will continue, and that, of course, involves SpaceX as well. Really, I don't see a whole lot of downsides to it. I am confident that Starship will eventually replace SLS, but it, too, is going to have to pass tests at least as convincingly as SLS has done in order to take over from this rocket that's really been proving itself as of late. And by the way, during these tests, Orion may actually help Starship to succeed. How is that going to happen? Well, during this flight, engineers have been conducting the first part of what's called the Propellant Tank Slosh Development Flight Test, also called Prop Slosh, which is scheduled during the less active parts of the mission. It calls for flight controllers to fire the reaction control system thrusters when propellant tanks are filled to different levels. Engineers then measure the effect the propellant slosh sloshing has on spacecraft trajectory and orientation as Orion moves through space. This, of course, is going to be extremely useful to Starship because of low Earth orbit refueling. Propellant slosh is going to be one of the biggest challenges that a Starship tanker is going to experience while maneuvering to refuel Starship for a journey to the Moon, Mars, or any place else. So interestingly enough, Orion may be carrying out the necessary test that will eventually lead to its replacement. And that, I think, is very good news. Smash that like, hit that subscribe. We are only 80 or so subscribers away from 90,000. Man, thank you so much. We've been growing so fast lately. And once again, thanks so much for all your support during this extremely long visit in the UK, which I hope is coming to an end very soon. So until Orion successfully splashes down in the Pacific and until its replacement, Starship carries out an equally successful test, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.